This is Don Greer again from www.athskansas.org and we're here today at the Kansas Oil Museum in El Dorado, Kansas at the truck show. We're taking a break from uh, pictures of old trucks today to show you some of these fascinating exhibits. Uh, if you if you're starting out here, you may want to go back and uh, look at my discussion of the model and the uh, the actual exhibit of a cable tool drilling rig to understand that the shot understand how oil was drilled in the early days. Well not so early because I know a guy my age who started out working with the old cable tool rigs that the rotary ones came later. Okay, this is the central power unit room. And you gotta remember in the early days where today uh, air, you would you see working wells still working oil wells still dotted along the prairie maybe miles and miles apart in the early days you would open up an oil field and you would have if you're successful you would have a lot of uh, wells drilled very close together also power plants were a lot more expensive they just couldn't afford to have a separate engine on uh, every wellhead to, to pump it. So where you had a large strike and, a lot, and an oil field where everything was relatively compactly located, you would have a central power unit and we'll show you how that works. So you got a big long flat pulley that twist from running vertically to horizontally to this huge, huge wheel. So you can see it, it probably ran at a pretty slow RPM compared to the drilling unit, or I mean compared to the power plant. Now if you notice here, you can probably tell there are two wheels attached underneath the big wheel and and they're attached on a shaft that's like a crankshaft with two throws on it. And you see that. See how those wheels are offset? They're not neither one of them is centered under that big wheel. It's it's uh this should be both very securely attached to the ground. As you can see this is this is probably about right poured concrete floor under the thing to hold it and then you have like a uh, two throw crankshaft and at the top of this this big huge wheel looks like it probably would have originally been secured at the top as well you would imagine and on the, and on the circumference of each of these wheels on the two crank throws you see you have a whole lot of attachments and on you see on that bottom one On one of those attachment points, there's actually a cable leading out through the hole in the wall of this shed. And then we'll go show you what that does. And if you look around, there's a lot of holes coming out of this shed. Not as many as there are attachment points on the, on the power wheel, but there's still a few. And you notice the one over here, that's an actually a solid rod rather than a cable. That thicker one attached, leading out of the wall. So let's go outside and see what those do. Okay, now we're outside of the power shed for the central power unit. And we're looking at one of these cables. Well, actually, that's more of a rod there that was attached to the bottom of the wheel. 
on an eccentric on a crank so you're turning rotary motion into lateral motion going back and forth so this cable would move as you see it constantly right and left being turned by that big wheel and if you notice if we follow we follow the path of this rod it ends in a small pumping unit now you should know that this exhibit of, of course is more compact than real life and so you have a you have a juncture there, an attachment point between two rods. In real in actual operation, these cables or these rods probably would have extended hundreds of yards in all direction, not just a few feet out the door. You can see this is very much well in a way work operates a lot like the pumping rigs, op rigs operate today and these would have been probably used in fields that pretty much uh, flowed by themselves just like the old movies where uh, you know they, they strike oil and everybody yells it's a gusher it's a gusher and they run away uh, so they didn't need a whole lot of extra pumping to make them operate. You see the cable pull back on this point would tip this whole thing. It's got a pivot point and that that would raise this rod up and then you have this beam, this walking beam attached here and of course pulls the rod in up and ground out of this pump. The pump's not very impressive by Day standards looks like about like a water well pump, but that's it. So it took when you already had the oil under pressure, it took a lot less. This is a similarly designed unit attached to another point on the wheel. Now, the interesting thing here is you see this rod's not coming, the cable's not coming straight away from the uh, power unit in the power shed but it has to go around the corner because obviously you can't have all the rods overlapping each other so it goes around the pivot that uh, changes the operation by 90 degrees and this is the unit that was attached to the heavy heavy rod that we saw inside and I presume that that is this pump is not to pump oil out of the ground but to transfer it over a larger distance say the, far, the pumps that were farther away from your central tanks you probably had to have a booster pump to make the oil flow that distance.